On this episode of the Hyperfast Agent Podcast, we are joined by Jeff Fitzer from the Lab Coat Agent Podcast. Listen in as Jeff presents at the Hyperfast Sales Summit. We hope you enjoy. Testing, testing. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, good. Let me do this. Okay, so those of you in Zoom land, where am I looking out here? Can you see me? Am I looking at you? I'm wearing a uh, turquoise uh, lanyard here. That means I like hugs. So for those of you out in Zoom land, just give me, give me, give me. Thank, thank you, thank you. I love you, all of you. I love you, all of you. Okay, where's my clicker? Let's get started. It's my wallet. There's my clicker. No sound. Hold on. Let's wait for let's wait for the technical difficulties. Video tip number five. Remember what I told you in video tip number one that you should change your backdrop to kind of keep the audience guessing? Well, I'm taking a page out of Noelle Nielsen's book and going very bold with this backdrop. So shooting a video in the shower or bathtub might be a little over the top, but the point of video is to catch your audience's attention. So maybe this is a little too bold for you, but I think you get the point. So if you wanna be successful at video, you have to shoot a video in the shower, the bathtub, <laughs> or maybe the toilet, sitting on the toilet. That's it, that's it, that's it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, no, seriously. Uh, so I have picked up a little bit of what uh, some of the other uh, speakers have been talking about in terms of video and social media influence. And so I'm gonna expand a little bit on that today. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why I guess I'm an expert at it. Uh, that's not uh, self-proclaimed, that's offered by others. But kind of how I've grown my business and why and how it's parallel to you guys. Uh, and it all starts with creating influence. And the first thing you think about when you think about influence, or at least I do, is I think about like the Kardashians, right? Or I think about Ryan's world on YouTube, or I think about Gary Vee or Grant Cardone, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not one of those guys. But influence is on a micro level, and that's where you guys all have to look at this. And so I'm going to go deeper on technical aspects of shooting video and, and, and kind of explain how you guys can be the micro influencers of your community and do exactly what I've done at whatever level you want to do it at. Uh, and so I start with just you know, giving you the, 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 uh, the dictionary definition of what influence is. Uh, and so I'm going to start with this. I'm going to explain to you who I am, because not a lot of people know who I am, um, because this is a very diluted world. And even though I'm all over social media, uh, every time I go to a new city, I realize I'm not that big of a deal. Uh, and so I'm going to explain to you what video has done for me. And it's not to brag, but it's to give you context of what it can do for you. Because I'm just a, a little old guy from St. Louis, Missouri. By the way, I'm in the mortgage business. That's right, I'm in the mortgage business and I'm standing on real estate stages. And you all know, every one of you realtors, whether you're here or on Zoom, the only re reason we get invited into rooms, in real estate rooms, is for donuts, to buy booze, or to bring my checkbook, right? And so the reason I say that is because I've kind of flipped the table on the real estate industry and figured out how I can actually bring value. And, and I have realtors calling on me. And that you're thinking to yourself right now, okay, this isn't relevant to me. Your mortgage, I'm real estate, but put yourself on my, in my shoes. You want the same thing. You want to attract, right? You want to attract your audience. You want your audience to be calling you. You don't want to be chasing. Well, if you do want to be chasing, more power to you. But I didn't like chasing business. I like my phone ringing. And I've even had several conversations with people here, just, I've only been here for 24 hours, who said, I see you. I like you. I want to do business with you. So imagine doing the exact same thing. And I'm not kidding. 
all of this has been built by me doing video. So it started with me uh, going to a, a mastermind called Closing Table. That's where uh, Carrie and I have become friends, uh, which led to a friendship with Tristan Ahumada uh, and, and uh, hosting the Lab Code Agents One Events, Lab Code Agents. If you're not a member, you should be one. Uh, then hosting a show called Viral Video. I am now the host of the Lab Code Agents podcast. If you don't subscribe, you should. Uh, it's really good. I am the fortunate one who gets to interview all these badasses, Carrie being one of them. And uh, so it's a lot of fun, a lot, very informational. Uh, now I stand on stages, uh, of course, as, as you can see. We are the, this is among several things. We are the mortgage ambassador to Wailopo. We are a partner with Club Wealth. Uh, I was named a top 30 video influencer in 2019 by BombBomb, uh, which was probably one of the things I'm most proud of. Um, there you go. And, and actually in the sales education category, uh, appropriately. Uh, now I am a moderator of a Facebook group called Brand Builders. If you guys know Sharon Srivatsa or Dean Aguilar, uh, Lana is also a moderator in that group. And so I don't know about Lana, but I was like floored when they texted me and said, can you be a moderator? Will you share to this group? Made me feel pretty good about myself. Uh, and then more recently, uh, we have started in the last, uh, we started last springish. A, a school called the Business Video School, where we literally teach video. That's why I'm going to be talking about that today. Uh, and specifically, we've been very targeted to real estate. Uh, and then lastly, and most recently, I am going to be a coach on an app called Social Coach. Uh, and what this is, is this is a platform where literally I create prompts. So people who struggle with content, who know they want to post, who know they want to be more visible, but they struggle with content, uh, we will be actually doing it for you. So these are some of the things, and this started about five years ago for me, uh, that have just completely advanced my career. And I'm not even kidding. It started with a Facebook Live. About five years ago when Facebook Lives were brand new. Uh, and from there, it just progressed and evolved into more things. And it has created massive opportunity. That's why I'm here today. It's all because of that. It's all about video. It, it's done massive things for my career. Uh, so let's let's talk about it as it relates to real estate. So obviously you're going to create video. This is we're going we're to be very basic here for a minute. Uh, why? To get your phone to ring, right? Uh, which is going to allow you to stand out. The whole point of video is to stand out, to be different, to differentiate. I know what you're all thinking. I'm scared to death of the camera. So was I. I mean, you should see my first Facebook Live. I know I've watched some of Carrie's. She does the same thing. We share some of our old videos where we were terrible, but that's the name of the game. Like practice makes perfect. And Carrie and I were just had the balls enough to keep doing it and keep looking stupid until we actually got good at it. That's the reality of the situation. And that's what you do. And you will stand out in the crowd, uh, which will then, of course, uh, create more opportunities for you to gain listings, gain buyers, uh, which then creates business growth, which then means you start growing a team, which then all of a sudden you start to get speaking opportunities. Just talk to Lana. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly her path right here that I'm showing you on the board. Uh, which then, of course, leads to who knows what. Uh, but that's the point. That's the basic. I think you guys know this, but I just wanted to break it down for you in some images to say doing video, creating a presence on social media, creating influence will create these kind of opportunities for your business. And so let's, get, let's go through some statistical stuff when it comes to video. A lot of this you've probably already seen before, but I'm going to drive it home. Uh, people retain info better. You've seen this before. Viewers retain 95% of information through video versus 10% when reading a text. This applies to social media, this applies to email, this applies to text messages, this applies to everything. Uh, if you do it via video, people are going to retain more, they're going to consume more. It's just, it's very simple. It's very simple math. Uh, building relationships uh, through video, I'll, I'll talk about this here in a second. It's called parasocial relationships. If you haven't heard of what that means, I'll explain it. Oops, too fast. Um, and of course, it's a super scalable way to communicate. Like for, for example, I mentioned BombBomb. Uh, my business partner, Sean Curley in the back, we use BombBomb all the time. And it's a great way to get integrated into video because it's embedded into our email. And so what we've done is we've taken a, a platform like BombBomb and so now instead of sending an email to a client saying, here's a list of congratulations on an accept the contract, here's an, a list of documents that we need, we now do it via video. Now we'll still put the list down below but now it allows us to be authentic. It allows, it allows our customer to, to hear tonality and to, to, get, to feel our emotion. And it's, it absolutely wins. Sean can even tell you that we've won customers who have said, I'm going with you because of the video, because you helped me explain it. You helped explain it to me. It helped me understand it versus trying to read through the text. Uh, so it's massively scalable. It's so much easier to shoot a video than it is to type a long email. So much easier. You just gotta get comfortable in front of your camera. So let's talk about parasocial relationships. I mentioned that on this last slide. The, 
definition of a parasocial relationship is a one-sided relationship where one person extends emotional energy, interest in time, and the other party doesn't even know they exist. So for me, it's like Maverick and Goose on Top Gun. Like that was my childhood favorite movie. And I felt like I was good friends with Maverick and Goose. Every time I go to the beach, I feel like I am, uh, you know, slider uh, playing beach volleyball. Anybody who knows Top Gun, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I've extended emotional energy feeling like I'm one of them, like Tom Cruise and I are good buddies. And this is the point of a parasocial relationship. It's not just authors of books or actors. You can create a parasocial relationship. Like I mentioned before, I walk into rooms like this. I'll have somebody who I've never met before come up to me and be like, yeah, I, I feel like I kind of know you. Your wife's beautiful. Your daughter's so f entertaining. And in, in, in one light, it's kind of weird. But in the other, it's like hashtag winning because that means I'm creating a parasocial relationship with people that don't even know me. So imagine doing that in my community. It's no different than it's, this is just an evolved version of billboards. It's an evolved version of, of a grocery store cart. It's an evolved version of a bus, a bus stop bench, right? People drive by it, see you all the time. They assume you're the expert. But if you do it via video on social media and you create community content, people just start to know you and they don't even know, you don't know them. They don't even know you. They just feel like they know you. And that's how people want to do business with you. Uh, it's kind of like this. Uh, I'm in a complicated relationship with a fictional character. You've all felt that. Any of you readers know exactly what I'm talking about. And of course, this one with Harry Potter, where the fan says, I feel as if you're my real friend. And Harry Potter says, I don't know who the hell you are. Um, and that's what it is. And this is a real thing. And again, I'm going to repeat it again. I'm just a little old guy from the Midwest. I have no theater background. I have no video education. I'm all self-taught. Anybody can do what I've done. You just have to do it. You just have to, to grow up the strength uh, and the and desire to do it. So video is more important now than ever. You know this. I'm going to share a few more stats, and I'm going to get into some technical stuff. 80% of buyers and sellers, this is very real estate related, want to work with an agent who uses video. I mean, does that not tell you something there? Uh, they want to work with an agent who you'll be, think about it, all the parody videos now, all the videos on listings. If I'm a seller, I want to do business. I want a, an agent who's going to make a fun video, sell my house. You think about like Bob Tompkins. If you guys never heard of Bob Tompkins, you should check him out. Like that guy makes entertaining videos or Brad McCallum. These guys are amazing at what they do. If you don't know them, you should follow them. They, their business is going like this. I mean, like hockey stick curve to the max because of video, because people want them to list their home because they know they're gonna create super sexy, entertaining, fun videos. They know their house is gonna get seen. Homes listed with the video get four times the inquiries. I kind of just uh, beat that into the ground. Uh, including videos and emails, we kind of talked about this, doubles the click-through rate. Again, if you use a platform like BombBomb, the beauty of BombBomb is it's really easy to use because somebody even asked me this last night. Why do I need BombBomb when I can just shoot a video on my phone and just send it through email? And I said, because it takes a little bit more time, it's clunkier. You can, but if you use BombBomb, there's a little red button in your email, Gmail or Outlook, and it pops up in a window and you can just hit play and start talking. And then it embeds it right into your email. There's nothing you have to do. And then it also includes a three second loop. So the beginning of the video where they open up on their phone or their email is like you holding up a sign saying, hey, hey, Karen, you know, are you waving? Are you doing whatever? Uh, it grabs their attention. So it increases the, the click through and reduces opt outs because again, there's something that attracts their attention. Uh, and viewers, of course, we already mentioned this, uh, they retain 85% of info through video. Um, and then actually this stat was the beginning of COVID. I think this is probably up like 2,050% now. Uh, but traffic on social media in general is gone way up since, since the pandemic. Um, you know, is your sphere of influence on social media seeing you or are they seeing your competitors? That's why you have to be doing video. So uh, this, is a, this is a good graphic that I stole from uh, one of our business video schools. This is, a, I love this because you can see here the big blue circle is most of you, right? It, well, pre-pandemic. This is what you did. You went, to, you went to networking events. You went to a chamber of commerce. You went to BNI. This is what you do. Uh, and then there's this other small little segment that makes video. And then there's that even smaller segment of people who do both. And the reason why I bring that up is because I mentioned when I walked into a room, people know me. And I've said this for several years now. So when I was going to networking events and you walk into a room, you know, there's always that awkwardness, right? It's always like, hey, how you doing? How's your family? How's your business? Nobody really gives a crap, right? It's really just weird. It's a weird situation. I don't like it. When I started doing video and started sharing my life, 
I started walking into networking events and people were like beeline to me because they were, they were awkward and didn't, they were just standing there like this and they're like, oh, I recognize that guy, I'm gonna go talk to him. I'm gonna go ask him about, I'm gonna go ask him about the miles that he's running. I'm gonna go ask him about his wife. I'm gonna go ask him about his daughter. But it also made my life easier. So again, it, video just makes life easier. It just, it makes you get to be more well-known, whether it's your, uh, a, an, an audience in a room full of colleagues or, or, it's, or it's an audience full of uh, potential clients. Uh, and I like this graphic. So let's get a little technical. So I know that, and I wasn't here for the first day to listen to my dear friend, Lana, which I hear she pumped me. God love you, Lana. Um, and, and I know that, uh, I know Dan was talking about it today. And I know Krista Mayshore, who's also a friend, she was talking about video. And I go to a lot of these events. Carrie and I hang out a lot throughout the year. Well, this year has kind of sucked, but most years we do. And we hear people always talking about video. I'm one of them. Uh, but what they typically don't do is they don't tell you what you actually need to shoot the video. You know, people get lost and they're like, yes, I'm going to shoot more video. And then they get home and they're like, oh, shit, I don't know what I need to shoot the video. The reality is you, you need, it's very simple. You don't need to overcomplicate this. And I'm going to go through that with you. So, well, before I go into the tripod, you don't need a fancy camera. You absolutely just turn your phone on. Nowadays, 11, 12, even a 10, it doesn't matter. Actually, it doesn't even matter if you have an iPhone 6. I don't care. It's good enough. It's perfect. The sound quality is good, but I'm going to give you some sound ideas. But this is what I feel like, this is what you do need. So if you're shooting video, this is what you need. Get a tripod. Okay, just get a tripod. There's nothing worse, and, and, and this is where I'm going to give you guys some, some technical advice. And you, most of you have done this. You've shot a video in front of a house. This is what you've done. You've done this. Uh, I don't have my phone on me. You've done this. You've held your phone up like this, right? And you're walking around or you're standing there and you're nervous. And guess what happens? Shake. And I, and I get motion sickness and feel like I'm gonna throw up by watching your video. And so I stop watching about 30 seconds in because I couldn't stand it, right? All you need is a simple tripod. This guy right here, uh, I got on Amazon. This is my favorite one, $24.99. Maybe the price has changed since I put this up. This is just an example. It extends to five feet. Just holding a tripod. Now, if you can afford a stabilizer, get one. But this is simple. I'm, I'm keeping it simple here. Just, a tri just holding a tripod gives more depth. So either you can stand it up, or you, if you're doing a talking head video, or you can hold your tripod. It gives it more depth. So I'm not looking up your nostrils. I'm not seeing the pores on your face. Uh, and, and it also allows you to kind of extend it out a little bit. Uh, and, and of course, it does stabilize it. So for whatever reason, holding a tripod, we actually did a video test on this where I was holding my phone versus a tripod, and it, we, all, we were pretty amazed at how much it helped stabilize my video. So don't be one of those agents. If you don't have a tripod, set your phone up, please, because I don't want to get sick watching your video. And remember, to keep your audience's attention, you get, you, this is those little things, it's those intricate, intricate details that will get people off of your video. Second, lighting. Uh, Dan just talked about this, uh, a ring light. This is exactly, I think, what he was talking about. Uh, this particular guy right here is on Amazon for roughly $46.99. Uh, can, there's a million options of lights. Uh, you can do a ring light like this. This is very popular. It comes with different shades of color. Uh, you can do box lights. They, you can do clip-on lights to your laptop, onto your phone. There's so many different lights you can get. Get a light because, again, I can't stand it when I'm watching a video especially with people in cars. People like to shoot videos in cars. I think it's because it's a safe place. The, the acoustics are great. I think it's more the safe place than the acoustics. Uh, but, and the lighting sucks and their face is in a shadow. Well, that draws me off. I wanna see you, right? And you're branding yourself. So make sure you have good lighting. You don't really need to have lighting if, if you're gonna be shooting light during the day because all you need is this guy. You just gotta know where to place it. Well, you can't place the sun, but you can place yourself. And so anytime you're shooting a video, make sure the sun's never over here. It's got to be right here. Your phone, the back of your camera should be facing the sun. I know this sounds really simple and basic, but you'd be surprised. For example, most of you all are working from home, right? And you're on Zoom meetings. And if I had a nickel for every time, somebody's computer is here and the window's back here and the light's shining on the back of their head, which means their face is a shadow. So if you're having a, cl a client meeting, your face is a damn shadow. Don't do that. Rearrange it to where you, the sun is shining on your face. And I know, again, some of you are thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to, my face to be on it. I don't like how I look. Uh, look at this guy, right? I mean, I have no hair. I dress like this every day. Uh, it, 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 it's, the point is you are you, be you. Your audience wants you. Uh, for those ladies in the crowd, 
I say this every single time that I speak, you should actually intentionally shoot videos when you're not always dialed up. I'm not saying roll out of bed if it's like a total mess, right? <laughs> But, but like, how are, you, how are you on a Sunday afternoon, right? Where are you doing when you're laying around? If you shoot a video like that, you're actually going to find you're going to attract more of your audience. They're going to watch your videos because it's relatable. Because then they look at you and say, oh, my God, she's just like me. Because if they look like Lana and Carrie all the time, it's like famous people, right? But if you I just wanted to see the reaction to that one. But, but seriously, and Carrie does this. I know because I watch all her stuff. That's why they stopped to watch. Hundred percent. And and you know what? It probably wasn't the message that draw, drew them in. It was the look that they're like, "What the hell is she doing?" And that's it. And it and then it became relatable. Uh, Noelle Nielsen's another one. One of her best videos. I don't know if you remember this when she did when she had her hair in curlers. And she intentionally did it that way. And, it, and, and by the way, Noelle, when she was shooting videos, is a master. She's amazing at another one. Uh, but that was one of her best performing videos. She, it was all natural. And, and, and all of, you know, all the moms of the world could just be like, oh, my God, yes, I relate. And, they, and it was like an eight-minute video. I, as a dad, didn't watch the whole thing because I was bored. Uh, but the point is, just be yourself. It's easy for us guys. I know it's a little bit harder for you ladies. Uh, and then audio, I mentioned already once that your phone audio is probably good enough in most settings. But if you're in a public setting or you're outside and there's background noise, especially if you're like doing a listing video, a professional video, most of the time it doesn't matter because most of your video is probably not even going to be professional. It's just you sharing your life and that's okay. But when you want it to represent your brand, just invest in a lavalier microphone, something simple like this. Uh, $27.99 on Amazon. There's a million options. I point this, I, I bring this one up because there's a lot of options with the traditional uh, plug-in that all of our cell phones now don't have. Um, and so this, like there are options. So just make, pay attention because otherwise you're going to need the adapter. This particular one, there's a lot of them now that actually come with the plug that goes into our iPhones. Uh, make sure you get the right one or that you have an adapter. So this is just a simple lavalier microphone. It will make your video, your sound so much more crisp. This is another one of my favorites. I have a couple of these are interview sets. Uh, I don't know if anybody talked about uh, community uh, content, but one of our favorite pieces of content as real estate professionals is to create content around your community. Go out to a restaurant and interview them. Go out and interview local businesses. Well, this is important to have. You just have a, a lavalier, in, it's a uh, interview set, so it splits. So therefore, when you're sitting on the couch or you're sitting at a, at a table in the restaurant with the interviewee, that you can clip one on you and you can clip one on them and your sound just kicks so much more ass. It's so much better. And it sounds, you know, it just makes, again, it makes you more professional because there are a lot of agents doing this and doing it poorly. And remember, you, I, just, I just spent less, less than $100, I think. That's it. That's it. And she just bought it all. <laughs> round of applause. Round of applause. Overachiever. Overachiever. Right there. Good job. Good job. That's all you need. That is literally all you need. Now, every once in a while, you're going to probably want to up your game. And so here's another thing that I do recommend is you have one of these. This is Papa. He's our full-time videographer. Uh, now, I, on one side of my mouth, I tell you that you can do most of it yourself. But every once in a while, and if you really want to take video serious, invest in a videographer. Get a full, I mean, they're walking all over the room. Uh, yeah, yeah, right there, right there. Um, and so because you can't do what they can do, I can't do what they can do. And I have some skills, but I can't do what Papa can do. And they're going to get really technical and they're going to they're going to stage the setting. They're gonna do whole, but when you're doing like that million dollar listing or when you're creating a video, like an evergreen video about your brand, that's going to last a long time. Lana agrees with me. I know because she has a full time videographer as well. That's like next level. I'm not saying because I didn't start with a full time videographer. I just had one on retainer. You can get one per project, you can get them on retainer, and you can hire them full time. That was like a hashtag goal for me. Like I knew that that, that was what I wanted when I started doing video, I wanna have a full time videographer. Um, and that's something I highly recommend that all agents at some point in their video life hires a videographer to create some really good content for yourself. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, we're gonna stay technical here. We're gonna talk about some apps. Um, and so I'm going to bounce back to you doing video yourself. And having that, so I, we talked about, you know, how to hold the camera and some basic lighting and audio. But there's another thing that drives me nuts when I watch agents do video. 
And that is they start their video and you see this, and then they step back. And then at the end, they go in to push end. You need to have some basic editing skills to edit that out, to make it more crisp. And so I'm gonna give you a, a few apps that we recommend. These are really basic. iMovie, for example, comes on your phone. I don't use it anymore, but you all have it if you have an iPhone. WeVideo is apparently the uh, equivalent on an Android. I, I'm not an Android user, so I don't know. There are, there are probably 50 of these apps out there. Very simple, basic, easy to use apps to just edit out the beginning and the end. If that's, if that's the most basic knowledge you have, get it. You can YouTube it, you can learn, it's super, super simple. Uh, this is just a couple of images of what iMovie looks like. So what I like about iMovie, and by the way, in your cell phone camera, you can edit the front and back of videos. You should be doing that already. The reason why you would use an iMovie is because then you can edit in between, in the middle. So when I make a mistake, when you start doing a lot of video and you start practicing, you get in the habit of, first of all, you get more eloquent. It comes out smoother. But when you start, you're like pissed off all the time. Like, damn it, that didn't come out right. Damn it, that didn't come out right. But you can just keep shooting. And actually, I advise this. You keep shooting and practice editing. Practice your editing skills. Practice learning how when you screw up and you're like, shoot, okay. And then you go right back into it. And then you're going to learn as an editor that that's really hard to do. You have to stop, pause, smile, start again. And any, any, any videographer or editor will tell you that, that if you, do, if you just kind of run through seamlessly, uh, it makes it a lot harder. And this is why I encourage every single, every single one of you, virtually and live, to learn some editing skills. It will make a big difference on your videos. This is my favorite app. It's called Viva Video. It's available on iPhone and uh, Android. It's just a typical app. I actually bought the paid version, which cost me $50 for the lifetime. And what I love about it is, it, it allows you to add more like fun text and GIFs and images and a logo. Because you'll see on here, um, I can put any variety of logos. So imagine every single video you shoot, even if it's your personal videos and you edit them in Viva Video, you can brand your videos, which you all should be doing. And this is Viva Video. This is really simple. I don't know if they're still running that special, but 50 bucks for a lifetime? Come on. That's, that's a no-brainer. And so that's what it looks like. So in this particular case, this is, is I create content literally out of thin air, uh, but I had just bought a new coffee maker and I bought a bun and they say you can make it in four, you know, could makes coffee in four minutes. So I did it, but I did a test to see if it worked, but you can see some of the images that I put on there. I mean, my coffee had wings. That's all in Viva video. And it's really pretty easy to use. Uh, so I, I love that app. This is probably my favorite app. I highly recommend it uh, to, to anybody who's gonna be taking on more video. Here are some more apps. I'm gonna explain what they are. Uh, Vimaly is one. I like Vimaly. What I use it for, let me see if I have some images. Yep, there you go. Uh, I like Vimaly for this. Um, and there, by the way, there's other apps that do this stuff. These are just the ones that I've used. Uh, but this one, for example, you can put a header and a footer. I like that because again, it's hard to grab the attention of my audience. So I wanna let them know that you can see, I actually created this video right around COVID. And it was, that, that's exactly what I talked about. But that way, then my audience knows going in, well, if I had just had this image of my face, well, and actually I overachieved here. I even had a whiteboard, um, which is another, that's the, the same thing here. I just added to it, uh, but that's what we use for our bomb bombs. But this is just a way to grab their attention. So Vemily, I use the free version, as you can see, uh, it comes with a made with Vemily on there. I can change that and add a logo to that. I just like it because I like adding those footers and headers every once in a while. Uh, then there's Rev.com. That's not an app. It's actually a website. But Rev.com transcribes your videos. So as you know, most videos on social media, especially Facebook, are not watched with audio. People watch those videos and read what you're saying. Rev.com is a dollar a minute. You upload the video. You usually have it back in 24 hours, depending on the length of the video. And this is what it looks like. So they transcribe it to say exactly what you've said. It's about 98% accurate. The only mistakes they make usually are misspelling names. So I love, I love Rev.com. And then uh, Big View is a uh, teleprompter app. So it's two things. It's actually, it's a teleprompter app and a green screen app. So a lot of apps are starting to add green screen, but there's still a lot that don't. Um, and so if you're creating a video and you wanna be standing in front of the Eiffel Tower or you know, the Capitol building, uh, you can use Big View. You can actually type out your entire script and it's a teleprompter like as if you're a newscaster. So it'd be like, me reading this entire presentation 
uh, on the camera. So when, if and when you're not comfortable, you don't feel eloquent or the words just don't come easy, well, type out your whole damn script. Put it into Big View. I also have the free version of Big View. And then it will literally scroll and you can read it. So these are all like, I call these kind of comfort apps. They're a way like BombBomb. BombBomb's one-to-one -one video, right? So if you're uncomfortable with video, start with a BombBomb because it's one-to-one -one with your client. It's less scary. You're not in front of the masses. You're not in front of thousands or millions of people. Same thing with Big View. If you don't feel like you're eloquent or you're good and the words just spew out of your mouth, then get Big View and type your script. There's no excuse is the moral of the story here. There's literally no excuse. So use this stuff. Uh, and then a couple other apps that I like to use. Uh, Boomerang is Boomerang. I think most of you know Boomerang, right? It just kind of gives, it's, it's like a three second loop video is what it is. One of the ways we like to use this, and I'll give Sean all the credit in the world for this, but you know how everybody takes a uh, picture at the closing table, right? Well, Sean started doing boomerangs with, with his clients and they're just like this at the closing table, right? But, but you're grabbing more attention. It's really simple and really basic, but instead of, the clo instead of a, just a traditional picture, it, there's moving, there's action. And that's just gonna grab the attention of your audience. And people are gonna remember that you're the realtor. It's the whole name of the game of this whole thing. I love record it as well. Your phones actually come with this. This is a screen record. I use this all the time. Like if somebody texts me or calls me and says, how did you do that? Or um, I don't know how to navigate uh, your app to search for properties. You go to record it or you go to your screen record on your phone and you can navigate and, and basically you're recording what you're doing on your screen. And again, simple things like this, when I send it to, to people, they're blown away. Like, holy crap, that was really cool. And it also saved me time. It was efficient, right? I, instead of me having to call you or create a video or whatever, I just quickly did it, sent it to you, boom, there's, there's, there's what you need. It makes you stand out. Those little things like that, you'll be shocked. Clients will be blown away. And that's why they'll use you. That's why they'll remember you. And that's why they will refer you. So these are just some of, the, some of my favorite apps, some of the apps I use the most. Rev. There it is, Rev. Rev.com. That is a website, not an app. They need to come out with an app. Correct. Yeah, so what he was saying was on YouTube has transcription. Actually, so does Facebook when you do ads. When you run an ad, you can check a little box to, to transcribe your video, but the key is you have to pay, right? They're not gonna do it for you for free. Uh, maybe eventually that'll come, but right now it doesn't exist. Uh, so let's talk about distribution. I think you know what, where I'm going here. I've kind of touched on this, but I'm gonna drive it home one more time. I already mentioned BombBomb. Bomb. Again, if you're getting familiar and comfortable and for, for talking in front of the camera, there's no better way to do one-to-one -one video. Uh, there's, there's actually other services than BombBomb, Bomb, but we use BombBomb. Bomb. I'm, I'm an advocate. Um, I, like the, I love the guys. I love the service. I love the platform. Uh, but BombBomb Bomb is a way for you to do the exact same thing you would be doing. So again, I'm talking to those of you who are sitting here right now thinking to yourself, no way in hell I'm getting in front of the camera. I'm scared to death. And I'm here to tell you, you can sit across the table from your client one-to-one, -one, right? And talk to them. Why can't you do it through BombBomb? Bomb? It's the same thing. So I'm only talking to those of you who are deathly afraid. Sean and I were just talking on the plane yesterday about one of our LOs who's deathly afraid of doing a BombBomb. Bomb. But it just goes to show you, I mean, there's a lot of people, like, you're the norm. Those of you that are scared to death of the camera, I talked to you earlier, it's, it's normal, it's okay. And it's just something you're gonna have to mentally, you know, get, again, get over and practice. And that's why I love BombBomb Bomb so much because it's less scary, right? Um, and so, so I, I, I highly encourage it. Plus, like I said, it makes you stand out. I promise you, you will win clients just by using this service. Um, and then of course, there's the social media platforms. We all know them. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about kind of the difference between these platforms. You all are very familiar with all of them. Um, and I know you're now familiar with TikTok. That's Solana and Mai's favorite uh, platform. I'm not gonna say much about it other than this. Those of you who are the haters of TikTok, uh, the reasons are plenty, uh, but mainly it's because, well, it was China, which that's now gone, uh, but it was, and then it was, okay, the audience is really young, right? Uh, or it's, it's just a bunch of dancing and humor and goofiness, right? TikTok in and of itself, the technology of TikTok is far surpasses anything that exists. And, and, and I don't know, uh, so any videographers in the room, if they played around with TikTok, they can probably attest and agree with me on this. 
I will actually go into TikTok versus my phone. Like you go to, most of us go to our phone, we open up our video, we take a video, we upload it to a, an editing platform, we add text, we add music. All of that can be done within TikToks. So I use TikTok as a creation app. Yeah, sure, I have a lot of followers. I've been on it early. I was on it early, that's why. But now I use it as my content creation. And so I, when I'm shooting videos, I shoot them in TikTok and then I post them back to all the social media platforms. That's all it is, it's my camera. But it's also my editing. It's also adds text. You can legally add music, legally. That's important because it's very hard to do that on any other platform. Uh, and so it's an incredible app. Uh, I've been saying this, I actually started preaching about TikTok. It was a year ago, November at a real estate conference and most people hadn't even heard of it then. And look where it is today. It's still an in infancy. There's still a lot of time. But the reason why I highly recommend it is because of the technology piece of it. Get familiar with it because I'm telling you right now, anybody shaking your head internally because you don't want me to see you shaking your head because I'll call you out. Um, if you don't do it, it'll be a year, maybe two years from now. And you're going to be like, damn it. That bald guy told me and he was right. And here I am. Think about it. Facebook was a college app. We probably we were all on MySpace and scoffed it off, right? Uh, and then Snap came. And Snap, by the way, I don't know where Dan's at. Snap is still very relevant to teenagers. My kids don't text anymore. They snap. That's how they communicate. Snap doesn't have a place in the business world that I've figured out because believe me, I've studied it. Uh, but here's the important piece of Snap. Mark Zuckerberg has copied it countless times now, five to 10 times. And so the reason why I pay attention to Snap, the reason why I pay attention to my teenagers, well, it's not the only reason I pay attention to them, but for business purposes is that they are the predictors of what's coming, right? So it's, it's, so for everybody scoffing off TikTok because of the teenage app, you're wrong. You actually should be paying attention because it was those teenagers who made Facebook what it was. And it's those teenagers who made Snap, who's now been, you, you ever heard of an Instagram story or a Facebook story? Oh, guess what? Snap invented that. That's why you need to be paying attention. So then when stories came to those platforms, we're all like, what the hell is this? Well, if we were in tune with what was going on in Snap, we would know. And that's, what, that's what's happening. And the exact same thing is happening right now with TikTok. The exact same thing. Uh, so pay attention to it. I don't have to tell you about LinkedIn or YouTube. I think you all know very well about those platforms. Uh, but I will say this about distribution. One last thing. When you're creating content, which I do a lot of it, I cross post across all these platforms. And so a lot of people will say to me, it's like, gosh, Jeff, I see you everywhere. This must take up so much of your time. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's definitely time consuming, but at the same token, it's not that hard to copy paste caption from Facebook to Instagram, copy paste to LinkedIn, copy paste to YouTube, copy paste, you know, and then again, I create in TikTok and then post back. It's not as hard as you think. You just have to make it a strategy. I was talking to, uh, who was I talking to? Oh, uh, I met somebody for coffee this morning who's a big LinkedIner and she is kind of an anti other platform person. And I'm like, I get it. You have a massive audience on LinkedIn and that's great. And, and I'm proud of you and, and good job, but you've got audience that only spends time on Facebook. Some of your friends and family, people you may not even know. You've got an audience on IG that refuses to go to Facebook. And now you've got a lot of people that are spending all their time on TikTok. Or you have a lot of people. I mean, YouTube is the future of television. Television. Like cable TV is going to be phased out in the next five years. And it's all going to be through platforms like YouTube. So having a relevance and having a visibility on those platforms is critical. So be there. Get there. Uh, video orientation. This is an underrated topic. Uh, but it's becoming... Very relevant, uh, and here's, here's what I'm gonna tell you. So there's, there's different ways to hold your phone when you're shooting a video. Again, I was having this conversation this morning. So she and I shot a video at Starbucks right down the street, and it was funny. She immediately turned her phone horizontal, and I was like, why are you doing that? This should go vertical. And two years ago, I always turned my phone horizontal, but now everything's shifting to vertical. Why? TikTok and Instagram, that's why. Now Facebook is accepting and actually uh, I, I allowing, not, I wouldn't say allowing, but uh, the platform it used to like, like crimp the video when you did it vertical, now it's full screen. So if you're, if you're mentally used to turning your phone sideways for horizontal, you gotta know which platform it's for. So again, Facebook is good horizontal, YouTube is good horizontal, LinkedIn is good horizontal. But if you're gonna be posting to TikTok and Instagram, your videos, if you do them horizontal, will be smashed. 
It just doesn't look as good. So you've got to know which way to hold the phone for each platform. And I know this is a lot of information. You'll get used to it. I don't, I don't encourage, I shouldn't say I don't encourage. I don't expect anyone to just go out and dominate all five platforms, the five platforms that I suggest right away. But whatever it is platform you dominate, get very familiar with how you should be holding your phone. However, uh, we at the Business Video School also teach our students that you can very easily crop your footage into Square. You can do this through the edit feature on your phone. It's, there, it's, it's all in there, I'm not teaching you today, but it's literally that simple. You can change, uh, there's actually other, there's other orientations that you can choose, but if you choose Square, Square is probably the most uh, usable across all platforms. So if you wanted to, you wanna overachieve a little bit, play around with the edit button on your phone where you can change your images to, or your videos to Square, uh, which make it just a little bit, it, it'll, it'll, it'll fill up more of the screen across all platforms whether you choose one way or the other. So just a little uh, fun fact there. Okay, last thing um, on, on technicals, and this is something that gets always overlooked. We were just talking about this earlier. It drives me absolutely bonkers how you shoot your video. By structure, I mean, what are the layers of the video? Do, are you prepared? How do you start your videos? And if I had a nickel for everyone in the room that raised their hand, I'm not gonna ask the question, but how many of you have started a video? Oh, I just totally, ask the question. How many of you started a video with, hey guys, or happy Wednesday, or hey, it's Jeff here. Come on, be honest. How many of you started the video that way? That takes about three seconds, right? And you're all liars that didn't raise your hand. You're full of crap because I know you've done it. We all do it. We all, we've all done it. I've even done it. But if you start your video that way, remember three seconds to grab their attention. Do the math, like, like shoot yourself saying, hey guys, or happy whatever, or introducing yourself, and you'll realize you just ate up that three seconds. Screwed. You've got to have a good hook. And I'm going to give you some examples of what a hook looks like. Oh, they, they changed the, uh, they changed the, my font got changed here. But just always start your videos with a hook. You heard it, Dan said it when he was doing the Reels presentation. A hook, meaning a tease. Give your audience something, to, to, a reason to stick around, right? Give them some, I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you some nonverbal uh, hooks and I'm going to show you some verbal hooks. Something that catches their attention. They're like, hmm, I'm going to stick here for a minute. And if you start with the traditional way that everybody else is doing it, this is the key here. Start paying attention to videos on social media. Start paying attention to your realtor colleagues. Watch how they start their videos. I'm not kidding. Maybe 100% of the time, 99% of the time, they're starting it with, hey guys, it's Jeff here. Happy whatever day. Ugh. I cringe all the time. And my wife, my wife watches YouTube videos and she watches a few influencers that she loves to follow and they do it all the time. And I'm like, oh, babe, you need to like message them and send them to business video school and we'll teach them how to shoot their videos correctly. Yet they have millions of followers. Uh, but this is a way for us non-influential uh, people to grab the attention of our followers. Uh, so again, I mentioned it three to five seconds, grab their attention, create intrigue, tease, tease highlights to a video. I'll show you some examples of that. But for example, um, like if you're in front of a listing and let's just say there's a, uh, there's a feature of the house that stands out, a huge backyard, finished basement, brand new kitchen, whatever. That's how you should open up your video. Like if you're standing in front of a listing and remember you're holding your tripod, you're not holding your phone and you say, you should see the brand new whatever in this new listing of mine. Hi, I'm Jeff with XYZ Real Estate. So that way you're, cause remember the, the point of video and this has changed a lot over the last couple of years is not to go viral. I mean, that's vanity. Like if that's your point of doing video, eh, I, okay, I'm not gonna argue with you, but that's just vanity stats. I wanna sell a damn house. I wanna pick up another realtor, right? I wanna pick up another customer. And so at the end of the day, when you're selling a house, give them, give the viewer what they need, which is what they will want to watch the video for, which is, a, you know, something about the house. That's how you grab them in. Then intro yourself. This is very simple. Always make sure, especially in real estate, and you know, if, if you're, you're selling something, right? Mortgage, title. Don't forget to mention what you do for a living. Don't forget. You'd be surprised. People do it all the time. Mention, maybe name the company you're with. Always let them know who you are, what you do, it seems simple, but you'd be surprised. Pay attention to that. Then tell a story. This gets lost a lot. A lot of people don't plan videos. They just wing it. And if you wing it, you're probably going to fumble. 
believe it or not, when you start doing video for the first time, first of all, you're scared to death, and then you get on the camera and you vomit and you talk for five minutes and it's terrible. Prepare, prepare your videos. If, if nothing else, take a, a, a post-it note. I literally, I'll have my tripod and then I'll have my phone in the tripod and I'll have a post-it note stick, stuck neck on my phone with my bullet points. So I stay on task because I don't want to vomit. I do it. I do it too. We're all guilty of it. But if you'll always know when I'm vomiting is when I don't, when I didn't prepare, when I'm just spewing. And you know, we don't have much, you don't have much time to keep their attention anymore. It's a diluted world. So tell stories when it comes to houses, tell a story about the house, give facts about it. What's compelling about it. Talk to the seller, find out how long did they live there? What kind of really fun story can they say? You know, like, like if I was a realtor, I would ask my sellers, like, tell me about, you know, your life in this house, whether it was a year or 20 years, like, give me something that's just like, you're never going to forget. And then when they tell you that, say, do you mind if I share that when I'm, when I'm talking about your property? Because when you talk about something that's intimate, the viewer, feel, like they have a, they have a closeness to that. How like they, they have a strong feeling about it. Like, man, I can see my family making that same memory there. And this is why telling a story is so, so important. So make it personal. And of course, always give some sort of value. And then lastly, again, something that gets forgotten all the time. So th these are all very important, but hook, intro yourself, make sure they know what you do. Tell a compelling story. Make sure you have some notes. Make sure it's crisp. Make sure you're not going to talk too long, but always give a call to action. Always give a call to action. You know what to do next. Uh, even if you don't have a call to action, like open house coming soon or a new listing coming on the market soon, uh, how to get a hold of you, uh, where to go visit your website. Always have a call to action. Uh, sometimes it's just share this if you feel like this message is, uh, can touch somebody else's life. Things like that. Give them something to do. Always have a call to action on your videos. So I'm going to give you some examples of some, some hooks that I've actually created at listings. Um, and and I, I say this, you know, use what the listing gives. So this is literally what I did. I'll call a realtor friend in my market and be like, hey, I need to shoot some videos for a new presentation. Can I come out to your listing? You'd be like, great. I'm like, can you send me the pictures just so I kind of know what, what I've got when I get there? Um, and a lot of times the, the pictures don't even tell the whole story. But I intentionally did that to prove to you that you can show up to your listings that might be staged or whatever, and you can use what's in the listing to create something that's a little bit different and different than, hey, guys, and you can create a, a good hook. So here's some examples. So this particular listing had a basketball hoop. I had seen the pictures. I came prepared. I showed up with a ladder, and I showed up with a basketball. Why? Home, a place where I can go. I can't dunk, <laughs> but with a ladder I can. So imagine when you're that video for this particular listing pops up and I, that's what starts. You, I, I, I'd grab my own attention with that. I'm like, oh, that son of a bitch. There's no way he can dunk a basketball, but it got me to stick with it. It got me to stick with it. And that's, this is how I opened it up. Place where I can go and this is all shot with a phone, by the way. Shoulder, notice notice how home. you can't see the ladder. <laughs> Okay, that's it. So, and then I walk through the house. I will say this. Uh, I usually show this video, but the point of this, the reason I showed it to you guys is for the hook purposes. Uh, but since I have a ton of time, they gave me way too much time to talk. I'm just going to continue to vomit. When you're shooting your videos for your listing, so I already talked about how you should hook it, right? And, and start with a verbal hook, start with a, with a, a, vis a, a visual hook. But the next thing that a lot of agents do is then they just start walking through the house, right? And that's, that's what we do. And we just walk through the house and I want the five minutes of my life back. But there are some audience that actually wanna see the house. So what I did was to, to kind of show what you should be doing as agents is remember why you're shooting video. You're not really gonna sell the house probably. What's gonna sell the house? Price. I don't give a crap how awesome your video is. If you're, if you're overpriced, you're not selling. Now, I get it right now, everything's selling it, but in normal times, right? So the point of the video really more is, most importantly is the same reason you hold open houses, not to sell houses, it's to get buyers. The same reason, why do you do videos? To brand yourself. So what I did for this video was I had the agent with me. I would bring a teammate or a friend or a wife or a husband and they walked through the house and every single scene I was in it. 
I was in the office and then I was sitting in the kitchen and then I was in the bathtub, I actually, I was laying in the master bed all throughout. And I, and I added some humor to it, but the whole point was, Mao, the audience who stuck with that video and watched it, like they can't get me out of their head. That's the point. It's you guys, you're branding yourself. That's, and the reason I say that is because that is an easy way to do a video where you don't have to talk. You're just in the video. So it's just, a, it's just an idea. I actually, if, if you want me to share that whole video with you, I can. But let's get back to the hooks. So here's another one. I was at a listing. It was staged. It had a book. Uh, so I came up with a few uh, hooks here. This is one of them. So again, the imagery is going to be like, all right, what the hell is he doing? Why is he sitting in some random house with a book? It doesn't take a scholar to figure out that this new listing at 1888 Fox Point in Arnold is going to sell fast. You use what you got, use what you got. I just used a book and I just got a little creative with it. Uh, there was lemons that were on the counter. I used these two ways, here's an example. This new listing at 1888 Fox Point in Arnold is no lemon. Pretty simple. Very simple, very simple hook, but that's the first five seconds, right? That's what I'm trying to grab their attention. Last one. This new listing at 1888 Fox Point in Arnold is no lemon. This new listing at 1888 Fox Point in Arnold is no lemon. So the reason I showed, played that whole thing out was because I, I edited that in iMovie, uh, just as an example, added a little circus music just to make it a little bit of fun. And that's how easy this is. You just have to think a little bit outside the box to create compelling hooks. That's it. That's how easy this is. And I've done this, I've actually spoken, and I'll say this to you guys, everybody online, if we're not friends on social media, we should be, so go like me and follow me and let's be friends. Uh, because uh, I've had agents that have literally called me uh, when they're standing in front of a new listing saying, I watched you speak about a hook and I can't think of anything. I'm like, FaceTime me right now. Let me see the listing. And they would FaceTime me. I'd be like, oh, it's so easy. This is what you do. And I, I, I will do that for you. So take me up on it. But as long as I'm not doing something with my family, my wife will kill me. Um, I will respond and I will help you. Try to give me some notice. But that's literally happened before. Agents will call me while they're there and like, I've totally drawn a blank. Can you help me? And uh, I will do that for you. Because once you do it, you practice it, you'll get the hang of it. You'll walk into your listing and be like, oh my God, this is gonna be such a great hook. That's the whole point. Question. Can you do that um, uh, for writing? Like you show through, are you doing it only as a seller's agent or can you go into open house? Well, I mean, as, a, as an agent, it depends on what the point is. Obviously, if you have a buyer, you're not gonna be, you're not pimping a property, right? It's totally different. So as an agent, and I'm, I, I, there's way smarter people in the room than I am, but as an agent, I know that a lot of young agents, newer agents, they work open houses for that reason. Like you will go out, find your season agent, say, I want to hold your house open. That's exactly what I would do. And then I would tell the agent because no seasoned agent wants to hold an open house. So they want you to do that for them. And then I would say, I'm going to hold your house open and I'm going to shoot a bunch of videos while I'm there. Is that okay? Just get there. Why, if I'm a listing agent, why would I say no to that? I mean, I don't know, Lana, would you? I mean, if one of your agents said, Lana, I want to hold your listing open and I'm going to shoot some videos and, and broadcast it because I'm branding myself, but I'm going to be broadcasting your property, would you tell them no? It's free promotion. And now it's touching a whole nother audience and they might sell the house and guess who gets the, the commission, right? So, um, so again, and I, I've mentioned this, I'm going to say it again. If you haven't made videos yet, you know, start simple. You have, you have the camera in your pocket. Just pick it up and make videos. Dan did this earlier. He made some of you create reels. Most of you didn't. I was watching, uh, but some of you did. Um, and good kudos to you who did. But like I said, you just need to practice. You know, like anything, practice makes perfect. I'm not kidding. I mean, it's taken me years to become more eloquent and become better in front of the camera. You just have to do it more often, all the time which is why I like BombBomb, Bomb, because it forces you, if you start using it and you realize the power that's in it. Remember how I started this presentation? You know, our, my brand, our business has grown exponentially. And, and I think Sean would agree with me that, that we can pinpoint it to two things. Like we were successful before video, but we've hockey sticked 
since. And we've grown and we're growing in all these markets. And I can tell you that it's not because we're really good at mortgages. That doesn't grow our business. It's the brand, it's the video, it's the social, it's the everybody now knows me, which has created so many opportunities. That's it. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's app, you can have exponential growth with video. Now I will tell you this, it also is a long game. Like this is not something that's just going to pop overnight. It's not Zillow, you're not buying a lead. But if you enjoy that, if you enjoy buying leads and chasing business for the rest of your career, then just don't do this. But if you want to get to a point where business calls you, where your phone's ringing, which is literally what's happening for our growth, same parallel concept, that's happening for us. Like I, We're at a point now where we are going to be choosy about who we partner with because we don't have capacity. It's a good damn problem to have. It's truth. Uh, but just do it. Get in front of the camera. Practice more often. Because remember, you can turn on your camera and not post it anywhere, not share it anywhere. Get used to it. I shot a lot of videos in my early days and watched myself. You do. I mean, and it wasn't for vanity purpose. It was, it was to get better purposes. It's the same thing I did with podcasting. I listened to my own podcast because I wanted to get better. Like, what did I suck at? Where did I not sound right? What would sound better? You, this is the kind of stuff you got to do because I hear a lot of people all the time that say, I shot the video and I just posted it. I didn't want to look at it. I actually disagree with that. You, the only way you're going to get better is by critiquing yourself. Question. Yes, actually, podcast. She asked who we're using for the podcast, but uh, Sharon McCormick owns Podcastic. They're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this completely off subject, but I'll answer the question uh, for podcasting. So uh, I host the Lab Code Agents podcast. We have a service that takes, I record it. I do them all in Zoom for the most part. Sometimes I'll do them live, but for the most part in Zoom, uh, they'll take the audio and they will edit it, which doesn't usually need much editing, but if there's background noise or whatever, and then they will write all of the show notes, they will write the bullet points, they will post it out for you. Um, it's really awesome. They'll add an intro, they'll add the music, they'll add the commercials, whatever it is you have. If anybody is, wants to get into podcasting, which is becoming very, very popular. Um, Like learn and get better over the years but i wanted to get some of your insight on um you know not everybody can go out and afford a 500 dollars a day videographer uh what are some of your methods for i guess vetting videographers um kind of like early on somebody that's maybe not necessarily in the market for the super high end but is, is trying to get at least something down well nowadays it's getting easier because there's a lot of videographers because real estate's low-hanging fruit for every business right real estate's out ahead and so most businesses especially in the media world are targeting real estate. So videographers are no different. I know a lot of videographers that probably never saw themselves getting into real estate and they're in real estate now. So, I mean, for, so first things first, I'd ask around, ask your friends, ask your colleagues, ask what other people are using. Um, I would probably go stalk people in your market and see whose videos do you like? And then just go ask them because most people don't have a full-time videographer and those videographers, those services, they want your business. Um, the other thing you can do is of course, well, again, I use social media for everything. I'll just put out a post and say, looking for a videographer, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get options. And then, uh, I would ask them for, so when you get those five options, I would then ask them for, uh, some examples, like what, what have you shot before? That is something that is relatable to my business that will make me want to hire you. Like put it on them, make them earn it. Where I had to clean up somebody else's mess from uh, from from a maybe a videographer that wasn't necessarily a right for that role. Um, so just make sure you vet and you find somebody that's like that you, that you that will work for you, not necessarily for another situation. That's and that's correct. And, and another and the way, another way that I would articulate that is to say, find somebody who took the time to do a little homework on real estate. Because if they didn't and they're flying by the seat of their pants, I don't know that I'd hire them. I don't want the extra work to have to train you. And by the way, let me point out that most videographers are not good. They're not going to post for you. And they also aren't not going to, they're not going to write the script for you. Like even Papa, our videographer will tell us all the time. I don't sell real estate. I don't know what the hell you want to say. <laughs> Literally people will show up to shoots completely unprepared, which really pisses him off. But what do we expect? He's a videographer with a, that background. I mean, he went to school for it, but they didn't teach him scripting for real estate. You, you're the expert, not him. 
He's the expert at making you look really sexy, but you have to be the one with the message. So I don't know if that answers your question. Um, here's some, here's some uh, three videos that you, sh you can and should shoot at home. Uh, these, are, these are just examples from the uh, video school. Going live, we talked about the platforms. Uh, Dan talked about how Reels is, you know, you're playing the algorithm. You want your, your videos or you want your posts to get more uh, engagement. Well, the lives are going to give, increase your engagement. You go live versus shooting a video and posting it, you're gonna get more action on the live. So, and I know that is like the scariest thing to do, but it's something that you should do. We have a question from the virtual audience. Um, for how long should a video typically be from Andy? Andy Kim in our audience? It's a million dollar question. It depends on the platform, but the shorter the better. And, and uh, here's another ring, I'm gonna bring TikTok back up. TikTok's got it figured out, short content. There's a reason why TikTok won't let you create a video more than 60 seconds, because they know what our audience, they know what our attention spans are. Now, if you're posting content for YouTube, sky's the limit. In fact, YouTube rewards like seven plus minutes. It's the only platform that does that. So my opinion is, and, and this is another reason why I love TikTok, because I'm creating the exact same inspirational content that I've always created. I'm intentionally creating it in TikTok because it's forcing me to blurt out that message and get it in within 60 seconds. So I'm doing talking head stuff, but I'm intentionally doing it on TikTok because it's forcing me, because I know I have the foresight, because I've studied this crap for years, that the future is the TikTok technology. And so I encourage you guys, if you go on just to do a video about whatever, you're talking about whatever it is you talk about, whatever it is you're, that, uh, that, that you're passionate about, you watch. You'll, you'll, you'll chew up two to five minutes. And that's why I love using TikTok because it'll force you to practice. I have to take my message and crunch it. And I have to practice at getting it concise. But I know that when my audience sees the TikTok uh, logo, they're more apt to watch it because they know it's gonna be short. It's not gonna eat up their life. And so the answer to your question is there is, honestly, there is no answer to that. If you have something to talk about and it's 20 minutes, doing a video is better than not doing a video. So do the video. Uh, you just get used to, just know, when you start doing video, you're gonna get a lot of engagement because people are like, holy crap, what are they, what are they doing? And then all of a sudden it becomes monotonous and they see Jeff all the time. So I gotta get really good at grabbing attention, right? So over time, if you keep vomiting for five minutes, you're, gonna, you're not gonna get much engagement. So get it down. If you want an answer to the question, I'd say try to keep all your videos under two minutes, unless, unless it's YouTube, under two minutes. And if you really wanna be an overachiever, get it less than 60 seconds as best you can. Uh, FAQ videos, so this is another way to really incorporate videos. So frequently asked questions. You as a realtor, you get the same question all the time, right? Like, what is an inspection? What's the purpose of it? What is title insurance? What, what is mortgage insurance? What, any of this stuff, right? You can go record FAQ videos that you can just spew off at all times. Like for example, what we have, we have uh, process videos. Uh, and so we have a video that says, congratulations, new, new uh, congratulations on your contract. And it's, it was created generically and then it automatically, automate, automatically goes out when, when it gets triggered in our loan origination software. Uh, and then the same thing for your appraisals in, same thing for clear to close, same thing for congratulations on your new purchase. Cong hey, one year anniversary. So FAQ videos are things that you can create that can be evergreen and you can use them in perpetuity. This creates efficiency in your business. So then when somebody emails you and says, hey, can you explain to me what title insurance is? Boom, just grab that little video that you've got saved, fire it off, bump, done. Covers your ass. Makes your life whole hell of a lot easier. So I highly recommend recording FAQ videos and then remote interviews, I talked about this. This is a great way to grow your audience on social media by using somebody else's audience. And that is go out and give back to your community. Everybody should have a digital mayor strategy built into your business, AKA putting out content about your community, about your city, about your area. And that is interviewing local businesses. Because guess what, well, guess what happens every time you do one of those interviews? They're tickled. And guess what they're doing? Sharing it to their business audience, sharing it to their personal audience. And then they're, before you know it, when you've done 10 of those, you're the expert. We've got a friend uh, in LabCode agents, Erica Steitenroth. She just started doing this in Houston. And she, she heard the response has been overwhelming. I think she's done about five of them now. And uh, she hired a video, by the way, she hired a videographer for this. You don't have to, 
but she hired a video videographer for this. And now she's got businesses who've seen her videos. Guess who they're calling? Erica's probably gonna start doing business for these business owners. They're gonna start selling their homes. Think about, this is, this is the power of what you can do with video. There's so much opportunity there. So these are just three uh, video ideas. There's a million of them. I talk Jeff, about this. Are yeah. you, just going back to the live, are you going live on other platforms or just Facebook? Because, you know, oh, Instagram has yeah. it. Yeah. TikTok has it. I, th I think it works best on oh, Facebook, oh. but the live features. Uh, no, well, the algorithm uh, favors it on all the platforms. It does. And literally yeah. every one of them has it. YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok. Actually, TikTok, that's one place I don't go live. I've done it. TikTok's weird. I don't know if you ever watched anybody go live. Lana, you can attest to this. It's weird. Uh, like you're like just sitting there talking to your audience. But most of the platforms, it's like you, a live video is no different than a pre-recorded video. It's just live. It's just helping the algorithm. But yes, the answer is yes. It helps on YouTube. It helps on LinkedIn. It helps on Instagram. It helps on Facebook. What I will do sometimes, because I favor Facebook and Instagram over LinkedIn, I will actually set up two phones. I have, uh, I have extra phones. And so I will go live, because you can't go live at the same time on one phone. So I will go, now there are apps where you can do this, um, like, like Zoom. Uh, Zoom, you can't do it uh, live. Dan, do you know, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but there's several. I've used the, my laptop. Like I've used my laptop as an before for, for live on Facebook, and then my phone for live on Instagram. I know you can do it that way. There and well, there's other platforms like Zoom and Zoom will spit it. They you can I think, only do I one. I think on like Zoom. Zoom and Easy Webinar, I have to choose between YouTube or correct, Facebook. Correct, correct. But know there's if let me do but both. there's there's products like Zoom and I'm, the name's escaping. We're using it in Lab Coats now, and it's it's really cool for two reasons. One, you can go live on three different platforms at the same time. But this is more talking head stuff. Um, but you can also like when you have engaging your audience engages, and you can. Like if somebody pops a question, like Sean asks a question, I can pop that question on the screen with his little image. And it's kind of fun, it's kind of engaging. So if you're doing that kind of content, but back to Dan's question, uh, I, yeah, we say Facebook because honestly, the reason why we say that is because most of our audiences are very familiar with Facebook. Not all of, most of them, not a lot of people are really focusing on Instagram, which by the way, you should be. Uh, and not, of course, not a lot of people have focused on TikTok yet. And LinkedIn's kind of its own beast. I know some people that are crushing it on LinkedIn, by the way. Um, but whatever platform you favor, just go live. Just go live on it. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Can we take a couple more questions? Of course. Yeah. Okay, we got our Zoom people on. We've so, got like 27 more hours, so we're good. Beautiful. All right. So Andy's popped up again. He says, uh, do you use special effects on TikTok or TikTok videos? Oh, hell yes. Oh, <laughs> hell yes. That's the beauty of TikTok is there's, there's so many editing features in there. Uh, it is so much fun. I mean, I did one, so I'll pay attention to what's going viral, but there was one where you could do a split screen and you're, can, you can put your body on somebody else. And so somebody was like doing some dance, right? And I just pretended like I was doing the dance. That was, that was just a trend. Uh, there's so many features. It's unbelievable. Cool. Um, Jose also wanted to know if it's OBS that you're referencing. OBS, no. No, but that's probably one of them. I'll figure it out and uh, what is it? No, There's that's not it either. Apps that you can use on StreamYard, the StreamYard, you just helped me. That's it, StreamYard is the one I'm thinking of. We like StreamYard, uh, but there are others too, by the way. StreamYard just becoming popular. It's just like Zoom, but you can, you can go live on three different platforms. It's kind of cool. Any other questions there? No, okay. Yeah. I'm loving YouTube a lot and um, I want, I'm wondering if you have any tips for live, going live on YouTube, um, anything specific? Because I've, I never went live yet. I record everything. So I have to go through the process of editing and doing all that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think if you're gonna go live on YouTube, you probably have an audience there. It's just like TikTok. So TikTok's really hard to get live engagement unless you have an audience. And YouTube's the same way. So if you're good at YouTube, which there are some people like Malcolm Lawson, uh, Ken Pozek, uh, Karen Carr, these are all realtors that are crushing. Like YouTube is their main source of business. In fact, I think all three of them, it's their only source of business. So somebody at their level can go live and their audience, because their audience is engaged, will probably get alerted. And their audience just likes the fact that they can engage live with that person. Uh, I actually admittedly don't use live to engage my audience. 
I use it for the algorithm purposes. Some people do it, by the way, this is another pet peeve of mine. I can't stand it when somebody goes live and says, I'm gonna wait, I, I'm gonna wait a couple seconds for my audience to come on. Come on, like who the hell is waiting and sitting around waiting for me to go live? Nobody, right? Just get it, get on with it because most of your views, like if you get 2000 views, like 1,992 of them watched it after the video was done. They watched it later because think about it. When I jump on somebody's live, if Lana's live, by the time I jumped on, I'm probably 30 seconds late and I missed what the point of the video was. So I will literally say, I'm gonna go back and watch it later because I wanna watch the beginning. So think about that. Like that's another like hook, if you will. No offense to anyone, but there's nobody waiting for us to go live. Maybe our moms. Uh, I mean, nobody's waiting for anybody, to, unless you're Gary V, right? Don't, don't, don't go live and be like, I'm gonna wait a few seconds. You're losing your audience. Cause somebody who actually is there is like, really, I'm gonna sit there and watch you breathe. Nobody wants to do that. Yes, yes. He was saying, uh, so anybody who can't hear that, he said you can schedule lives. And by, and by the way, you can also schedule by just posting, announcing you're going live. It's another thing that you can do. I, again, I don't do it. I use live just to help the algorithm because I know it's helping my engagement. And remember the name of the game as visibility. The more people that see me, the more people that remember me and that's it. I even, I know that the statistics say that most people aren't even watching a fraction of my videos. I know it, but it's, it's kind of like email marketing. Email marketing, like people, if you, if anybody tracks their stats on email marketing, it's like less than 10% open, right? It's terrible. But anybody who does email marketing will say, who cares? Your name is showing up in their email box consistently, which means you're, you're reminding them of you. That's it. It's the same thing with video. That's why vanity doesn't matter to me anymore. It's just a matter of when you scroll your feed, I want to be on it. And that's, the, that's how you play the algorithm game. I'm getting off topic here, but they gave me so much damn time. I'm just going to keep talking. Um, of course, you guys know this guy. Uh, Carrie and Dan like have dinner with him every week, I think. Um, <laughs> document don't create he, he says this i love this and so anybody who struggles with content this is my mo this is a, if you follow me you know this is my mo i document i don't create i share my life and if you watch if you're watching my stories right now there's like 10 of them on there because i'm just sharing what's going on that's it I'm vomiting letting you know I'm sharing my life that's it that's all you have to do your the the uh the amount of content that should be business related should be less than 20 percent what is it that you like to do? Are you into crocheting? Are you into cooking? Are you into beer? Are you into sports? Are you into fitness? Are you into diet? What are you into? Share content around it. <laughs> that would be entertaining. I would totally watch you talking about Jägermeister. Think about it. Like if I, walk, if I tune in and see her at a listing versus see her with a bottle of Jäger, which one am I gonna watch? Come on. <laughs> The reality is most people are gonna watch the Jaeger one because again, you're just trying to build a rapport. You're trying to build a, a relationship with a parasocial relationship. Don't forget what you're trying to do here. So do what Gary says, document, don't create, don't, don't force it, share your life. That's right. This is, a, this is a quote from Grant Cardone, I love it. People give in to the person they see the most. So this isn't rocket science, folks. The more you show up on their feeds, the more, it doesn't matter if they're watching their videos. It doesn't matter if they're reading your emails you're showing up more often. I'm telling you firsthand experience, it works. It's the only reason why people come up and say hi to me because it's not because I'm good looking. Yes, you are. My wife's good looking, we've established this already. I'm just a good, I just convinced her to marry me. Seriously, they give in to the person they see the most. I already said this, my shitty video will outperform your absent video all day long. You've all heard this before. This is not a new quote now, but this is true. Like, don't get, get out of your own way. Your videos are going to suck. I'm gonna tell you right now, your videos will suck, but they're better than the one that doesn't exist. That's the reality. Uh, and then lastly, be you. We talked about this, be authentic. Your content should be 80% plus personal. It should be sharing your life. Just be you, don't be afraid to be you. If somebody doesn't wanna do business with me because I wear hats and t-shirts, I don't wanna do business with them either. And I've never lost, I've never had anybody tell me they won't do business with me because of how I dress. And I dress this way because I stand out because as a mortgage guy, everybody's dressed the same way. They're dressed like my boy Carl. No offense, but they're dressed like that. That's how a mortgage guy dresses or Sean. Uh, and, and so for me, it, it allowed me to stand out. 
and it's more comfortable, to be honest with you. <laughs> I just like it better. Um, so, oh, oh, by the way, I had a treat for you. My business video school people sent this to me. Uh, so we don't push the video school at all. We give a lot away for free. We pretty much, you can, <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but you can really get a lot of, most of your free stuff. We have some internal content, of course, that you have to pay for. Uh, and we do some hands-on, one-on-one trainings you have to pay for. But if you text learn video to that number, we will send you 14 days of tips. Uh, and then honestly, I would join the group, the Facebook group, Business Video School. There's tons of free content. You'll see me on there. You'll see Tristan Ahumada on there. You'll see Nick Niehaus. Uh, this is an example of what it looks like. So if you type learn video and you have a, it's literally the only thing that can be on there is learn video. So if you have a signature, it won't work. But if you type that to that, you're gonna get a little text that says, please reply with your email address. And then we're gonna fire. We're not gonna spam you, I promise you. We're only gonna bring you value. I guarantee it, you can opt out. I don't, it, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Jeff, but, can I ask another question? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. We got one. Uh, is video text description important? How long should I write a description for each video, Andy? On different, yes, it's very important. So remember when I talked about telling a story, all influencers will tell you, even, and I'm gonna use Instagram as an example. Instagram was designed as a, as a visual platform. People left Facebook because of all the nonsense, right? And they went to Instagram because it's more visual, but you need to give your posts context and tell a story. So when I post a picture of my daughter drinking, well, she's cute enough as it is, but I usually tell a story with it. It doesn't matter what it is, what the video, it doesn't matter what it is, tell a story. A lot of people want to follow Jeff's advice and they want to post and they're, for lack of a better term, lazy. And you post and you type one sentence and you get it out there. Understanding the platforms and what, which ones want hashtags, Instagram, not Facebook, right? TikTok wants hashtags but all of them need captions. Now, TikTok only gives you so many characters, but Instagram and Facebook let you write a book if you want to, but you'd be surprised. Most of your audience, just like your emails, they're not gonna read those captions, but the ones who read that caption where you told a story, they just drew, they drew closer to you because you told a story and that made it more personal. So the answer to your question is, that's extremely important to caption your posts. Everybody get this? Good. Now, let's, oops, let's be friends. Here's where I am on these platforms. So whichever platform you're on, friend me. You'll get to know me really well. You'll get to know my family. You'll get to know Winter. She's that little one. I post a lot about her and my older daughters are like, you like her more than us. I'm like, no, she's just cuter right now. You guys are cute in your own right, but you're actually, my older daughters are too cute. I don't want to share them. <laughs> so. Uh, that's all I got. Any, any questions? I, I talked for as long as I possibly could. If no questions, oh, oh we got, well. Jeff, can you talk about sharing content to your personal page versus your business page and kind of how you would redirect people to your business page versus how much you would use each of those two Which platforms? Platform? Uh, mainly Facebook. Yeah, so I think the where you're going at with that is how much, like if you, if you have a business page and you have a personal page, how much business content you should you be sharing back to your personal page? 80, 20. Um, if, here's the thing, again, remember, the point of social media is visibility. And in order to win at social media, the algorithm, AKA a computer, is deciding if you're gonna show up on your audience's feed, right? The only way the computer knows that your audience wants to see you is by engagement. Like in every platform is a little bit different, but by engagement, I'm not talking about likes. Like that's like the lowest denominator. Uh, it's, it's comments, it's shares, uh, different platforms are different. It saves on different platforms. Um, but the whole name of the game is to get engagement to show up. So back to your question, if you're sharing, if, if you're on social media for business, which I am by the way, but I don't share business content. Try to figure that one out. Because I'm playing the game. My audience, if I talk about mortgages, will, I will get no engagement. It'll be, a, it'll be a graveyard. But if I share winter or talk about my travels, people are interested in that kind of stuff. And therefore, the algorithm then sees, okay, Jeff's audience likes his stuff. I'm going to keep him relevant. So then when I do post business content, it'll show up, which is just that subtle reminder of what I do for a living. 
they're still not going. So even though I have more engagement than maybe you do, they're still not engaging my mortgage content because it's stupid. Nobody gives a crap. Even if you're taking out a mortgage, you're not interested in mortgage content. It's just a reality. And, and you guys know the statistics. How, many, how often are people buying houses? Like once every seven years or something like that? Think about it. And everybody knows a realtor. So why are they really engaging real estate? Con they're not. I'll tell you what they engage. Million dollar listings. That's what they engage. They like that. That actually works on TikTok too, by the way. So if you can get into, for example, uh, you asked the question about getting into listings, holding open houses. If you can get into high-end listings just for the sake of creating engagement, I would do it. I know Lana does this. I, Trist, Tristan does this. Tristan has, he's like the godfather of social media, but yet he intentionally goes to these $10 million Malibu homes and creates content around it because he knows people want to see that stuff. It's just reminding them of, he's, he's not even listing the property. He's just playing the social media game. Uh, does that answer your question? Jeff, do you mind uh, saying your handles? Jeff Fitzer. That's it, all of them. I'm very easy, <laughs> which is a good point, by the way. Uh, try to have the same handle on all of your platforms. It's not easy if you're Joe Smith. Um, so be Joe Smith Realtor or Joe Smith Colorado Springs, or whatever it is, and try to be consistent. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, our Zoom, our Zoom. So my, my, my name is spelled, so it's Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, but last name is P as in Paul, F as in Frank, I-T-Z-E-R. It's the same handle for all of them. Um, I was just uh, starting a new Instagram and was thinking of paging my realtor because my name is Paige and I just want to get your thoughts. Love it. Okay. Yeah, don't overthink it. Do okay, it. Cool. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, do you mind just repeating? Yeah, yeah. So say the question again. Let's just say it again. So you're saying? So I do have personal, I'm Paula, yes. Um, and now I'm doing my team, and some of my team members are saying, well, why don't you have A, B, C, the platform agency channel, but not my product have all these other agencies that they have to have to have to have to have to have And so, yeah, so the question is, is should you have a business page? I think is really kind of the simple question. Yeah. Uh, yes, because it's legitimacy. Remember, by the way, social media is like the way you meet somebody or somebody refers you nowadays. Where, where do they go? Like I go stalk people. They choose their platform, but that's what they do. And that's why having relevance on these platforms is so important. That's how I know I win sometimes because I know if they're comparing me versus some other guy or gal, they're going to go search my content. And they're going to fall in love with They're going to fall down a rabbit hole. And they're probably going to like me because, because they get to know me and I'm not boring them with content. But when it comes to business content, it's like your white pages or your yellow pages. So you have to have it because then when they're looking up a realtor, they're gonna probably go look you up and see what kind of content you have. And so that's why I would have it. And then occasionally share business content back to your, per so everybody asks this question. If I have business content, should I originate it on my personal page? No, originate it on your business page, share it to your personal because that's also another subtle reminder of what you do for a living. They may not go there, but they're seeing it. So yeah, have a business page on Facebook. On the other platforms, you really only need to have one handle. Well, that's what I'm asking. YouTube, you could have two, but I don't necessarily recommend it. YouTube, it doesn't matter. There is no such thing as business or personal. There is no such difference. But you can have a YouTube page that's called whatever business you want. YouTube doesn't necessarily matter. Like It's all about the content. So focus on what is your, what is your content going to be all about. Uh, the guy to follow on YouTube who's, who's amazing is Kyle Whistle. Kyle Whistle, he has made a massive living by, by YouTube content. And it's all community content. He's built pages that have, that have gotten so big and he's created so much content, he vacated it because he ran out of businesses to interview. But they're still drawing interviews. They're still drawing engagement. That's YouTube. So Kyle Whistle's awesome at, uh, at YouTube. He's awesome at all social media, but YouTube's his thing. Good? Any other questions? I think this guy Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Thanks for staying to the end of our video. For more videos like this, click here. 
If you're looking to get notifications when you do a new video, make sure you subscribe below. See you soon.